I have anticipated quite a number of the issues raised and I have already addressed them in my opening address um, and I do not wish to repeat except perhaps uh, if I think there are a few coming out very forcefully during the interventions. Uh, one of them concerns the rights of LGBT community and the recommendation to repeal the section 250 in our criminal code. Uh, I wish to reiterate what I have stated earlier during my opening address. Uh, I have engaged at my ministry in consultations with NGOs and those advocating for a change in the law, but that is not as easy as it seems. Uh, we are uh, in the with the specificities of Mauritius in quite a situation where we need uh, general consensus and agreement before a change in the law and in, in, in that direction as, as I have stated earlier uh, we are drawing some inspiration from the recent judgment of the Supreme Court of India uh, to, to see about the arguments that were proposed uh, for and against and the unanimous judgment given by the five judges of the Honorable Supreme Court of, of India um, suffice it to say at this stage that my personal office, we are engaging in discussion and consultation, but I reiterate that in view of the social fabric of the country, we need wide sensitization and acceptance from the population in the first instance before consideration can be given for the current legislation to be amended. On the question of the reservations Mauritius has put to the uh, I think it's the Maputo Protocol, if I'm not mistaken. It concerns the age, minimum age of uh, marriage. Uh, there is still this exception in our law allowing girls between 16 and 18 to get married with the consent of their parents or in the absence of a consent of parents, in the absence of the parents. Uh, the consent of the surviving parent or consent of a judge. Now, I agree, I have stated in my opening statement, it, it, this is a bit out of step you know, compared to other countries. There has been some progress in the general thinking in Mauritius, uh, but once again, even on this issue as well, we need some uh, wide consultation and sensitization and acceptance prior to uh, the change in the law, but I am of the of view that it is going in the right direction and I look forward to reporting at our next meeting. Um, the other cross-cutting issues which have arisen from a number of distinguished delegates concern the proposed legislation called the Children's Bill. Now, I have to report because the Children's Bill was mentioned in the previous review, that was in 2013. What has happened since my government has been sworn into office? In the big, uh, after elections in December 2014, that is beginning of 2015, we have engaged in consultations and I have to seize this opportunity to thank the delegation of the European Union based in Mauritius for the technical assistance it has ex extended to Mauritius, for the consultation with the NGOs, for the consultants who have been recruited for the drafting of the children's bill. Now, the, it, ha, it, was, it has taken some time because there was a first phase of consultation and a second phase. And why the second phase? The second phase concerned the validation of the proposed legislation. And this has taken some time. And we have reached a stage where the law is ready. Now it is a question of legislative calendar of the National Assembly. Uh, I am, I am very uh, confident that this bill will be introduced in our National Assembly uh, in the next session, that is next year. Uh, on the question of the disability bill, now this, the disability bill, the proposed law on disabilities, uh, distinguished delegates will appreciate that there are direct um, bearing of such a law on, just to name one, for example, government buildings, access. So it's, it concerns infrastructure. We need to address these issues and be ready and then uh, pass the necessary law. Otherwise, you pass a law and then uh, 
the, 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 the infrastructure is, is not in line with the legislation. So all this is going on uh, very positively. The bill is not a question of preparation, but it's a question of implementation of such a legislation. I am confident we are on the right track. On uh, the uh, other issues which were raised, Mr. Vice President, concerning uh, the on anti-corruption, uh, we are very committed to fight corruption at all levels of government. Not only in terms of signat being signatories and ratification of uh, international convention and international norms, but in domestication, domesticating the norms as well. Now we we have gone. A long way. I think the only, we are one of the rare countries which have introduced legislation for the civil asset, civil asset forfeiture of unexplained wealth at the civil standard, even without a criminal conviction for those persons who have accumulated wealth, which we can, which uh, the court ultimately will decide whether it is unexplained based on uh, their earnings and their way of life and how do they account for it. So I think we have gone even that extra mile in the fight uh, against corruption. On the question which was uh, raised, I think from the distinguished delegate from the United States on accountability, I fully agree. Uh, police officers should uh, be held accountable and this is why we have set up the Independent Police Complaints Commission headed by a former judge of the Supreme Court. It has been, the law has, was voted uh, and it is fully operational since um, April of this year. It has its own budget and it is up and running. Uh, we are, I am confident it is going in, in the same direction as mentioned by the distinguished delegate in, for accountability. On um, the question of uh, the, 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 no, um, the um, refugees and uh, migrant workers and their families, I had addressed it in my opening address. Uh, the position of Mauritius has been consistently the same over the years and I reiterate what I have stated earlier in my opening address. We have our limitations and we cannot, for those reasons mentioned earlier, Accede to the, the conventions mentioned uh, on the question on the question of genocide. Now, I wish to, to mention that Mauritius is a very active uh, member of the International Criminal Court, which indeed takes uh, care of such an issue. But I can venture to to mention here that there is uh, no legal impediment in so far as I am concerned. I'm speaking off the cuff, you will appreciate, but I don't recall of any impediment for the uh, ratification and I am informed as I speak to you that the decision has been taken to ratify. Uh, I shall personally look into that once I get back home. Um, the gender equality bill as well. Now, uh, this uh, is a legislation which will take care of a number of issues which have been raised uh, in this August Assembly. Um, I am confident it will be uh, passed in the next session. Uh, one distinguished me delegate mentioned that uh, of certain cases of imprisonment without trial, I can assure the distinguished delegate, and I speak not only as Minister of Justice, but as a former magistrate myself, there are no such thing as imprisonment without trials. The old detention or even without detention, all persons awaiting trial have regular access to independent and impartial tribal courts which oversee uh, the time spent on remand or the time awaiting trial uh, in case of any unfortunate uh, case of, uh, I, I am I wish to assure the distinguished delegate that I will personally look into it, but I am not aware of any such um, case of imprisonment without trial. In this um, second part of the questions, first, on the death penalty, 
Uh, I want to reiterate what I have stated at, during my opening speech, that with the enactment of the Abolition of Death Penalty Act in 1995, the death penalty was completely abolished in, in, in Mauritius. Now, on the question of the um, optional protocol, that is a matter I will have to look into together with the officers of my ministry as well as the officers of the Prime Minister's office. On um, genocide, I have mentioned earlier that we are indeed a member, an active member of the ICC, but I see and I reiterate no impediment into ratifying uh, the relevant uh, convention. On uh, trafficking in persons, it is an issue has been raised a number of, by a number of uh, distinguished delegates. Yes, we agree it is very high on our agenda. It is, a, it is an issue which we are tackling together with friendly countries uh, in terms of technical assistance and capacity building. Uh, I, I am of opinion we are going in the right direction and we will be able to live up to the challenge and face uh, those issues as and when they arise. And I seize this opportunity to thank uh, the, and acknowledge the technical assistance extended to Mauritius by uh, the friendly countries, um, one of them being, if uh, I need to mention, the United States particularly. Um, on, on the standing invitation to, to the to the special procedures of the Human Rights Council, uh, I have to uh, inform this August Assembly that Mauritius did extend uh, assistance, I can, as far as I can recall, in 2012 to the special rapporteur on sale of children, child prostitution, child pornography, 2007 on the subcommittee on prevention of torture, and um, also in May 2015 uh, for the independent expert on older persons and there is a forthcoming one soon uh, the visit of the independent expert on the effects of foreign debt and human rights on the question of a standing invitation now I will be looking into that and reporting in due course um, I am left with, yes, a few minutes more. Uh, on the question of the Chagos Archipelago, I am duty bound to reiterate my comments which I have made during my opening speech. Uh, this issue is between two friendly countries. <laughs> I want to say we are two friends who have a dispute. <laughs> And we, we hope the court will give its uh, opinion soon. Uh, have to, I have to particularly thank the distinguished delegate from uh, the Seychelles for raising the issue of climate change. This is a serious matter that affects all of us and particularly small islands like Mauritius, um, Seychelles and, and so many other uh, small islands. This goes to the uh, root of our very existence and this is a matter which we'll have to address uh, in our respective countries but also collectively. Uh, I, I, as I speak now I don't have a solution but I, I have to thank the distinguished delegate for raising the matter. This should be on the agenda on, of each and every country. Finally, um, I want to take uh, the remaining few minutes to acknowledge and thank the work of the Troika for this third UPR cycle for Mauritius. I know there is a lot of work awaiting the Troika as from now until the uh, adoption of the report.